All right, Siti Hawa Anurden from the Institute of Veterinary Biomedical Sciences at Massey University. The title of her presentation, Got Mastitis. <laughs> Hi everyone. Okay, let's just imagine I'm a dog for a couple of minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna like shake, shake it off like a dog would, right? After a great game of catch. Imagine I am that same dog and I've been chosen for a breeding program. 65 to 70 days of pregnancy, I give birth to six of the cutest little puppies. They're milking from me, they're nursing. I am the world's greatest mom, trust me. And then bam, two days later, my mammary glands are inflamed. They're red, they're hot, they're painful. What's supposed to be milk coming out is just pus. Lots and lots of it. Ugh. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of canine mastitis. Now, mastitis is what happens when the mammary glands or teats are inflamed and infected. And let me tell you, it is no walk in the park. Trust me, I'm a breastfeeding mother myself. Now, you throw the word mastitis to a dairy farmer and they'll go, oh no, especially here in New Zealand. It's because mastitis in the dairy industry is still a common problem, yet very challenging to overcome huge no-no for the dairy farmers and can be economically devastating. Furthermore, it can render the cow's udder unfit, so she can't produce any good milk. But then, why am I talking to you today about canine mastitis? This is because New Zealand has a wide range of working dogs, from farm dogs to police dogs to, study, uh, to guide dogs, which is the focus of my study. Not a lot of information out there regarding canine mastitis in the breeding program. So this enthusiastic researcher headed up to Auckland and then collaborated with the Royal New Zealand Foundation for the Blind and went to see what was really going on. So I had all this data. So how did I do it? I had all this data from 1998. I had to work my way backwards and then follow the data forward, a retrospective view. I then separated the non-mastitis case with those with, that had mastitis and followed them through and plotted what the key factors were. Was it the age? Do certain breeds get it more than the other? Is it the female herself or the male, or could it be both parents together? And on a more alarming note, are there super bugs out there that have become the villains, making it so much harder to control this disease? Now, what it seems at the moment is that female dogs that have not been bred for two seasons or more are at a higher risk of getting canine mastitis. And of course, there's that lingering question of those super bugs that we don't know much about. Essentially, ladies and gentlemen, studies like this proves that mastitis can occur amongst all species, humans included. And we need a lot more research to understand it and eventually overcome it. Now, at the end of the day, you know, I just want cute little puppies like Marley up there to go to his mommy and say, Oof, mommy, you got milk? Thank you. Excellent, judges. Uh, Seti, you have a wonderfully expressive style and, uh, and just a real gift for connecting with the, with the audience. Um, I, I thought that uh, you made the, the value of the study uh, very obvious and, and explained the, the process that you went through, the, the experiments very, very carefully, uh, and made the findings very clear and, and interesting, even for those of us who, uh, who, who aren't experts. Thank you very much, Seti. Um, I think the way in which you, uh, as, as Ted says, brought a huge amount of energy to your presentation, uh, helped to convey the way in which mastitis is relevant across a range of species. So I like the way that you started off at the very particular, the warm fuzzy example, and then moved out to, you know, the economic impact in New Zealand, particularly uh, amongst uh, uh, cows. So well done for the, the breadth that you managed to get into three minutes. Congratulations, Siti. Thank you.